welcome. Thanks for joining us in uh, ethical hacking and network defense. Um, happy Saturday. Yes, happy Saturday to you too. Um, I, I'm glad to be here. Um, I was told to come and you know talk about the importance of being responsible uh, while hacking. Um, which, which you know, this is an ethical hacking course, and we have ethical in the name uh, for a reason. Uh, what you're going to learn in this class can be uh, very fun, and you don't want to have too much fun. So it's very important to be ethical. <laughs> I, I can't. Anyway, I can't keep a straight face. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm like, this doesn't sound. That doesn't sound like Caitlin. Yeah, no, I can't. Keep, no, no. This is the, what you're going to learn in this class is going to be a lot of fun. Um, and unfortunately, you know, they're, they're, I'm reminded of some of the earliest hackers, and I'm not talking about the people at MIT. I'm talking about some women in the Middle Ages. So it turned out that the plague was spread by like the mites, <laughs> and uh, a, a bunch of women uh, were owning cats, and the cats were, you know, eating the mice and the rats that carried the, the mites. Uh, and and fleas and stuff that were carrying the plagues, and so they did not get sick. And this was one of the first, you know, hacks in recorded history. Own a cat, don't get the plague. And uh, a lot of people figured that these women were actually witches. <laughs> and uh, to this day, uh, cats are associated with witchcraft and witchery for that reason. Um, and so there's a lot of people that sort of view any sort of hacking, um, you know, because when hackers get into things, people get scared and they don't know what ha how it works and they just rush to conclusions and they start thinking, oh my gosh, that person must have been, you know, doing terrible things, you don't know what they did. Um, but it's important to remember that's sort of their <laughs> problem they need to deal with. I mean, obviously when you are hacking, you need to have consent, to, you know, to hack whatever computer you're going after. Um, but don't care too much about what other, other people think. Uh, just have fun. And that's my, uh, that's my, my big, <laughs> um, that's, that's my uh, big, uh, hmm. I guess, uh, I would say, uh, notes, uh, my, uh, what I would impart onto you is to have fun in this class. Because it is a lot of fun to have. Um, and, you know, if, if I had to do one thing, and this is your first class, if, if I had to do one thing, I was struggling with what to do. I could, I could give you a lecture, I and mean, that'd be kind of boring. Uh, but I could also uh, uh, introduce you to something, and I, that's what I'm going to do, because what really got me into hacking was that I like puzzles. And I started finding these puzzles uh, called CTFs, or Capture the Flags, and I was like, this is fun, you know. Some people do crosswords, you know. Some people do Sudoku. Uh, uh, Caitlin, like Caitlin, uh, some the audio is cut off bad, and Twitch is somehow not picking it up. It seems worse than on our podcasts. Are you on the wrong mic or something? No, let me double check. Um, it seems a little distant and echoey, and the people on the Twitch are apparently not getting it too well, too well either. I wonder if it's just because it's coming through your. Uh, it is. It is the wrong oh, web. Key. That's it. Now it's good. I don't know why it switched. I'm sorry about that. Okay, much better. Uh, yeah, somehow it switched to the wrong input. Uh, I'm sorry about that, everyone. Um, yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So usually it's supposed to come in through this mic, and for some reason it was coming in through uh, the mic on my webcam, which is terrible. So I, I didn't even know it had a, web, uh, a, a microphone. So anyway, yes, my advice to everyone is to you know ignore other people, what other people think, and just have fun. Um, and I want to introduce you to the concept of CTFs. So let me explain how this works. Um, so you have a uh, machine. Let's see if it will focus. So you have a computer. It's not focusing. Computer here. Uh, oh, there. Now it's focusing. Okay. So you have a computer. This is you. Right. You don't know anything about this computer. You're just given a computer. So you say, okay, well, what, what's on this computer? You, you just look it over. And this is part one 
of hacking. This is called enumeration. And so this is the this is the first part you do any sort of hacking. You you look over the computer and you say, what's running on it? What what does it look like? What software is running on it? You know, what can I do with this machine from my position? Okay, then you look it over and then you go part two. You start using it. Um, and by use it, I mean, of course, exploit it. So during this during this period, you start just playing with the machine and you say, okay, what can I do with this machine? How do I um, how do I get command access? And usually in CTFs, once you get command uh, command uh, execution, you get like a user flag. And now we're done with part one of the CTF. So now we have our user flag, and we can submit that for points. And you'll be doing lots of CTF type stuff uh, in these classes. And then we have a user flag, but that's not good enough for us. We want root. We want to be the administrator. So we go on to the third part in which we say, OK, let's go to, um, let's do privilege. Um, I misspelled privilege. Uh, escalation. And that's where we become root. So now we go from looking at the computer to using the computer to owning the computer. Right? So looking, using, owning. Um, at that point, we get the root flag. And then we, we finish the machine. And this is, there are so many puzzles. They're all unique. Every computer tells its own unique story. Uh, so let's go back to the webcam here. Uh, and so the, if you are beginning hacking, I highly recommend a site called uh, Try Hack Me. So if we go to here, here we go. So I have a window open uh, to already open to Try Hack Me. And it says here, you know, how uh, you start up a machine and this one's called Agent Pseudo. I've never done this before. Just this is as random to you and as mysterious to you as it is to me. So, but this machine is called Agent Pseudo. So very likely we'll be doing something with the pseudo command, uh, likely to get root. Uh, but maybe that's how we get command access. I don't know. Um, but if we then look at the page, um, it'll give us questions to answer. And so the nice thing about Try Hack Me is that it'll walk you through the process. Uh, so the first thing, it says enumerate. Remember, this is step one. We're looking at the system. It says enumerate. Enumerate the machine and get all the important information, right? So how many open ports? I already ran Nmap, and Nmap scans the machine, uh, and it gives us all the open ports. Uh, so we see that there's port 22, 80, and 21. So there's uh, FTP, SSH, and web services running. So now we can answer that question. So we'll say there are three. We push a bit, and it says, hey, you're right. Oh, this is fantastic, right? So how do you redirect ourselves to a secret page? So now, so I ran Nmap while Liz was talking because Nmap can take a while. Uh, moving forward, this would be a lot quicker. So whenever, at now that you're in 123, when you have a browser open, you'll also want Burp Suite open um, at all times. Never not have Burp Suite open. This, uh, what Burp Suite will do is when you make a request to a web page, it will log those requests and you can go back and see what exactly was going on uh, in your, while you were browsing the web between you and the server. Uh, so, sorry, what? For Nmap, what, what uh, tools do you use here? Right, so I'll show you the, I'll show you the command. So you'll learn all this in the class. This is just a, uh, I mean, it, yeah, an introduction. And if you go on to try hack me, it'll go through all these tools. Uh, but the nmap command that I ran is this. So it's sudo, because you have to run it as root, nmap. And I'm running the dash ss, which is a very quick syn connect scan. Because if you remember, your TCP goes syn, synac, ack. So it does syn. And if you get to synac, it assumes it's open. It doesn't complete the handshake. Um, it's verbose. It's going to run standard scripts. Um, 
uh, sorry, it's not going to be, it's going to um, do version numbers. Uh, it's going to enumerate like what's on there, run the standard scripts, look at all open ports, be verbose, yes. write the output to nmap TCP files so I can keep them for later. Um, do not do a ping reply uh, and the IP of the, the box we're attacking. It's a lot to take in. You will memorize all of nmap uh, just by doing try hack me boxes. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, but yeah, the output, as I mentioned, you get um, this wonderful output. So we see it's running, yeah, VSFTP 3.03. That's good. OpenSSH 7.6 um, and Apache Web Services. Awesome. Okay. And so now if we go back to the website, it says, it redirect yourself to the secret page. Okay. So uh, we have burp open. And usually I like to use Firefox for any attacking and I, it already there's a plugin for Firefox called Boxy Proxy that will handle proxies for you. I highly recommend getting that if you're using Burp. And now we'll go to that website, uh, the Try Hack Me box. So the Try Hack Me box website is right here. And like I said, I've never done this before. I don't know what's going on. So it says, Dear Agents, use your code name as user agent to access the site from Agent R. Okay, so that's very interesting. Um, and it's very good that we're using Burp because it says we're gonna use our code name as the user agent to access the site. Uh, and that can only really be done through something like Burp. So if we go back to Burp, we go to our proxy and HTTP history, uh, we'll, see the, um, we'll see the request we made. So I am going to take that request send it to the repeater. Uh, and now I can change the request. So we know that there's an agent R. So we'll change the user agent to R. And we'll see what happens. Uh, announcement, dear agents, use code name. Um, what are you doing? Are you one of the 25 employees? If not, I'm going to report this incident. So we got a different response. Um, but R is not what we're looking for. So. Let's play the alphabet game. Um, a, uh, we got nothing. B, we got nothing. C, um, we got nothing. D, oh, 302, fine. Oh, wait, never mind. A, yeah. So we did get a different response. We got a 302 um, and it says, it wants us to go to agencyattention.php. Okay, and that's good to know too. We know that the website is running uh, PHP. Uh, so we'll go to slash agencyattention.php. Attention, Chris, do you still remember our deal? Tell Agent J about the stuff ASAP. Also, change your password is weak. Interesting. Um, so we have, you know, two logins, maybe we have, uh, uh, nano, we'll, we'll call these users, uh, Chris, C, and R, and maybe Chris or Chris, okay, and we know the password is weak. We also know that it's running uh, FTP. So one of the things we might want to do is check to see if we can get anonymous access to the FTP. Uh, there was also mention of Agent J. Yeah, let's um, uh, let's try Burp again and see if there's something we get for Agent J. That's a good point. No, nothing. Um, so this might be a um, themed after the the movie um, Men in Black because J and R and stuff those those were characters from Men in Black. Uh, so let's open up the FileZilla FTP client uh, and we will oops, go to oops we don't want to go to Chris we want to go to the server which is this one right here. 
And we'll just try connecting anonymously, see what happens. And no, so let's try, they said the password is weak. So we'll try a program called Hydra, uh, user, uh, share word lists, uh, rq.txt, vcom, forward slash, forward slash, the server. And we'll see if we can get any logins. Um, going for this, hopefully it won't take too long. I'm sorry, I didn't realize, like I said, this was a mystery to me. I didn't think that there would be brute forcing <laughs> on this box, but apparently there is. Uh, but hopefully it will uh, discover the, um, the login quickly rather than later. Um, and then let's see, we can also do some other things while we're waiting. Um, we could enumerate the site, we could run something like Durbuster to see if anything else is there. Um, let's see, um, hmm. Aha, we got a, we, we got a, a login. There we go. So. Chris and Crystal. Okay. We'll copy that. We'll make a new file called uh, user paths. We'll say Chris, Crystal. Okay. Uh, we'll go back to FileZilla. We'll throw in the username, Chris, Crystal, quick connect. Can you make it a little bigger? A little bigger. Uh, that's a good question. Um, so probably, yes. Yeah. So for FileZilla, let's see. Um, this looks a little weird, but trust me. There we go. Oh. There we go. So now we can see the FileZilla window a little, a little bigger. Um, and we'll want to view, whenever you log on, make sure that you can see hidden files, okay. Um, and we have two agent.txt. So let's try going up a directory, see if that works. Nope. So we have two agent.txt, cutealien.jpg, and qd.png. Interesting. Uh, so let us throw that into our um, directory that we're working in. So I use... Um, See, try hack me. Agent pseudo. Now it's recording. It'll yeah. Be good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to download into let's say let's create a new directory called FTP stuff. Go to there, and we'll download. Now we got the files. Cool. Awesome. Well, well we got some files. What can we do with these files? Um, okay. So I, I'm going to. Uh, once again, sort of um, resize things so we can see the, the console. Oops, let's see. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, looks pretty good. There we go, as big as I can as I can make it. Uh, so now that we we have those files, let's look at what we downloaded. So FTP stuff. We got a text file. So, so to Agent J. Dear Agent J, all these alien photos look like they're fake. Agent R stored the real picture inside your directory. You your login password is somehow stored in the fake picture. It shouldn't be a problem for you. Interesting. So let's. Um, I would run strings on qd.png first to see what strings there are. Um, that is very interesting. 
uh, to agent r.txt in a PNG file format. I think I think we found our winner here. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, just to be sure, we'll look at cute alien. Nothing of interest. Yeah, I don't see anything in there of interest. So we know it is something to do with qd.png. So if we open up qd.png in something like GIMP, mm. let's see what happens. Mm. Interesting. Um, so it is a PNG file. We know that there's We know that there is um, something at the end there. So to agent r.txt. Um, so we know that there is a thing. What did it say again? It said to agent j.txt. So all these aliens look stored the real picture inside. Your login is somehow stored in the fake picture. It shouldn't be a problem to you. Um, Uh, just Would the login be in, be in between to agent R and to agent R? Could that be the password? It's a little short for that. It could be compressed. Hmm. Makes it sound oh, like. Oh, there we go. Oh. Uh, zip archive data, encrypted oh. size. Ha ha. So, yeah, there is some encrypted uh, data in there. So. It looks like there's a PNG image. There is, um, and the, the Zlib data is probably part of the part mm. of the PNG image. But there is a zip file after the PNG file, so we have to extract that. Um, and this I'll just have to look up. Um, how to use Binwalk to extract files, and I could just use dash H. This is key. What Caitlin's doing right now, I just want to call attention to a couple things here. So hopefully you notice that everything didn't just work like magic the first time around uh, smoothly, because that's never how this stuff works. You got to stop and, um, you know, f figure out when you're maybe uh, going the wrong direction or stop to look up things that you may not know along the way. And there we go. We have two agent R dot TFC cat two agent R dot TFC okay. unzip h seven o two dot zip. Uh, Need a later version. Oh, it's AS yeah. encrypted, so there's a password. Oh. Um, unzip help. Um, Unzip, let's see, how do we set a password? Um, unzip, help, rep, um, dash I, password, oops. Uh, uh, password is correctly spelled. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, quite not auto. Um, how do you set the password for the unzip? Uh, 7Z. Uh, we'll use. Um, F crack ship. Oh, yeah, we could use that. Um, zip, uh, zip to John 8702.zip. We'll do that. Two dot zip dot John. We can just get the password that way. That's right. Uh, John word list equals user sh share. So John is a password cracker that will uh, hopefully crack this zip file. Dot. Is that the John the Ripper? Yeah, John the Ripper. These are all various tools we'll learn to use as the course goes on, right? Absolutely. 
Nice. So the so the password is alien. So copy selection. Um, and let's just try logging in as Chris. At um, what is the? Address, copy that. Yes, absolutely. That's not it. Okay. Uh, so we know that the password is alien to unzip the zip. Um, uh, and I will just use FTP stuff, extract. Alien. Okay. Uh, and let's see, to uh, we need to send the picture to Q. Is that the password to get in? I don't understand what it's asking. Uh, it's saying we need to send the picture to QXGYTUX as soon as possible. Um, Maybe that's the right, password. Let's go, yeah, go on. Maybe that's the password. That's what I tried. Um, oh. I copied it. Um, Maybe it's C at. Oh, it's, it's, it was, it's, no, it's, 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 ag up? it's agent R, right? Uh, we're supposed to, R. We're yeah. supposed to be finding, no, agent underscore capital R is the name of the user we're looking for, I think. Agent R? Okay. Yeah, I think so. That. Agent underscore capital R. We'll try lowercase r and then uppercase r. Nope. So this is what's fun. There's always a puzzle to be solved. Um, and so we'll go back to the website. We'll say, how uh, how did you redirect yourself to the secret page? Oh, uh, we changed the user agent. Let's try that. Um, submit. I oh, got the correct, nope. Yeah, that's the correct answer. What's the agent's name? Chris. Okay, so we did the brute force. FTP password was, um, oh yeah. Um, crystal, I believe, yeah, oops. Um, crystal, actually. yeah. Yeah, crystal. Crystal. Alien. Oh, it's a steganography password. Is it really? Yes. Oh wait, no, no, that's not the steg password. Um, If we open up the, the zip file again, yeah, 86 bytes to agent R. We need a picture to QXTYUX as soon as possible. What are they saying? Um, uh, let's see. Um, i trying to think. Oh wait, you know what? I know I know exactly what we need to do. Um, it's not obvious, but if we go back to we're gonna go to Cyberchef. And we'll I wanna see if this is base sixty four. Aha, area fifty one. Um so, uh, area, so Pat, two, this is kind of obscure. Uh, so we need to send the picture to area 51 as soon as possible. Let's try, um, let's see if that's the Stego password. Um, that is the Steg, Steg password, okay. 
Um, stag, I don't think I have stag, uh, steganography software installed. Um, Did you go right? Is that what it's called? Uh, Steg hide? Yeah. So steg, steganography is the act of hiding information in pictures. Yes. Oh, I should have done this ahead of time. I thought it'd be fun if we did this all <laughs> together. I thought it was easy. I thought this was, this was going to be just pop a shell, you know, and then escalate to root really quickly. But there's a bunch of... There's a whole path. There's a, there's a chain here that we have to follow. Um, so uh, steg hide uh, help um, gas p area fifty one. Yes. How you learn all those comments? I do CTFs. A lot of CTFs. So I did try hack me. I do hack the box. Um, and yeah. Uh, so let's see, specify passphrase. Uh, Sego file will be like. Get alien.jpg. Uh, Is there any resource you can find all those commands in SM, like most of them in the same? Oh, yeah, yeah. Google. Google. There are lots of MMAP cheat sheets. Yep. Oh, extract. Um, extract. It helps if you spell it correctly. Extract. So message.txt. Ha ha. Yeah, message.txt. All right. So it says, hey, hi, James. Now we have the name of the agent J or somebody. Um, so we'll put this in here. Name of the agent is James. Okay. Glad you found this message. Your login is Hacker Rules. Okay. SSH. Oh, login password is Hacker Rules. Okay. Um, James. Is it with the exclamation point or not? Um, mm. Let's see. We'll copy SSH password. Uh, and we'll copy the IP again. And then we'll copy password. There we go. All right, we're in. <laughs> okay, that took much longer than I thought. But we got user. So like I said, you get the user flag first. So we'll get the user flag. User flag that took C. Um, We'll copy that, um, and we will throw in the flag. And what is the incident of the photo called? Um, incident of the photo. Isn't this alien autopsy JPEG? Incident. Oh, it's the Roswell, New Mexico thing, probably. Um, and and oh, it's not found. Uh, so if we wanted to download this, um, we would exit out, type uh, alien autopsy.jpg. Instead of running SSH, we'll run SCP or secure copy to the local directory. And we should save that somewhere. There we go. Hello, Spaz. I be quiet. Okay, so let us um since we know a username and password. We'll save that. Okay, awesome. 
Uh, and we'll go back into the FTP stuff. We'll look at what we downloaded. Alien on top stage four. Open that up in GIMP. Let's see what was on this government computer. I don't know what this title is. This looks like an alien autopsy of some kind. So I don't know if they want me to, to put. Um... Right. Yeah, I don't think it's important. Um, we'll get a hint. What is the incident of the photo called? Reverse image and Fox. Oh, oh, they want you to do OSIN. We're not going to bother with that. Um, uh, CVE number and escalation. So, um, first thing when you get on a box, let me show you the first thing you should do whenever you get on a box. Type sudo dash L. That'll show you everything you can run. Um, and this is running, well, we can, this is very interesting. Uh, we can run bash as anyone but root. We are also running, let's see, uh, sudo version 1.821p2. Um, uh, so if we, I imagine if we type that into Google and say CVE, um, Oh, there's a security bypass. Okay, cool. Um, binary file. Um, let's see. How does this work? So when you find exploits like this, make sure you understand what it's doing before you run it. Uh, so this is it's a Python code. It's going to run. Um, can you make the font bigger? Uh, yes, I can. Oh, that's better. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so the important thing is at the end, where it says sudo su number minus one in the binary. So we'll just run this. Hmm. In bash. Ah, and we're root. <laughs> Is that simple? Uh, like I said, yeah. Um, always make sure you understand what the what the exploit is doing. Uh, so all this exploit was doing was looking for things that you could run, and um, uh, and then just running that command. Uh, so anyways, we're now root. Uh, so we finished the box. Um, Root.txt. Congratulations on reading the box. Excellent. Uh, so we'll go back and finish it up. Oh, um, read flag. That's all we care about. Well, we'll the, the, there's some other flags they want us to put in for this box, but you know, it's not important to hacking. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to show off how to do a, a one of these boxes and get you started. Um, and like I said, uh, tryhackme.com is an excellent resource when you're starting out. Uh, so this was a this was a box. I it looked like it would be a lot of fun. Uh, aliens, easy rating, um, and but you can also if you can do these boxes, you can also go into learn, and you can go into learning paths. So you can start about you know bread teaming, be a penetration tester, and you can start learning about each tool. So they'll have learning paths about or modules on things like Nmap, probably. If I look for Nmap, yeah, here it is. They have an entire module just on Nmap, which is the first thing we ran. We also used Burp, and I'm sure they have a module just on Burp. Yep, Burp Suite right here at the top. Um, and so yeah, so there's. I, I can't recommend this enough. My recommendation to you is get on to try hack me or hack the box if you're brave enough and just start hacking into boxes. Just hack into anything you can see, anything you can find, hack into it and just have a good time. Caitlin, what, what are CVEs? What can you, what can you do with that info? 
Uh, so CVEs, uh, is, oh, there's something vulnerability, something. Um, uh, uh, common vulnerability go, go exposures. Yeah, yeah, common vulnerability exposure. So a CVE is when you have, let's say, a, a bug and it's publicly disclosed, uh, it gets a CVE number. So if you're looking for bugs in programs, you can usually type the program, uh, its version number, and then CVE, and that'll tell you the bugs associated with uh, that version. So like, for example, in this version of, um, of sudo, there's a bug that let us go and use roots, even though we were not really supposed to have roots uh, permissions to run bash. Anyway, so yes, it is. these are so much fun. Uh, this is what really got me into hacking. Uh, like I said, some people do crosswords. Some people do, um, you know, Sudoku. My thing and your thing too should totally just be, you know, hack the box, try hack me and other CTFs. They are a ton of fun. So once you learn all these newfound hacking skills, uh what how do you stay out of trouble or why would you even want to stay out of trouble why don't you just hack the planet and uh steal all the bitcoin and ransom all the systems and do all the bad things that you can do you're mm -hmm. going yeah you're going to be you're losing a, That's yeah, yeah, yeah 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 no you're going to be losing a lot uh, of money that way so uh you know hacking is a lot of fun and and it's fun puzzles and if you like technology and you like solving puzzles with technology you know, hacking is a great way to go, uh, but you can, you 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 could steal like ten thousand dollars of Bitcoin, potentially go to jail, or you could get a job at a you know major company like Google or NASA <laughs> or um, you, you, uh, like Facebook. And Are you telling me that legitimate employment pays? It does, and it pays a lot more than crime. Uh, so, uh, and then you could get paid, you know, a hundred thousand dollars a year, two hundred thousand dollars a year, uh, or even more, uh, to you know do this professionally um, and just to have fun and not get in trouble with the law. Uh, the other thing too is you really don't want to get in trouble with the law because a lot of cybersecurity jobs require you to have security clearance. So after I was done with Sam's classes, I got hired at this space program agency called NASA. And they very much required me to have a security clearance to work on their stuff. Um, and in fact, my current job at Amazon working on more space stuff uh, also requires me to have a security clearance of sorts um, due to the sensitive na nature of what I'm working on. And if I had a criminal background, I would not be able to do that. And I make, like I said, I make a lot more money now doing things legitimately than I ever could doing crime. And crime's just not fun. You don't, you don't do hacking for the you know crime of it, right? You do it because it's fun. Like I showed you, like the CTFs, the puzzles. It's a fun thing to do. Um, if you're looking to get rich, hacking and breaking the law, it's just it's not going to happen. Um, it, it's it, it, the the people that do that are people with no other options, living in you know North Korea, <laughs> um, and maybe some gangs in like Russia. And in fact, one of the things that really surprised me. I did some blue teaming and I looked at a lot of the code coming from some of the top, you know, APT groups. And the, the code was not amazingly like, oh my gosh, these people are like top tier hackers. I'm like, these people are good, <laughs> they're, they're fine, but they're not like top tier hackers. Um, and, and, you know, they just didn't have better opportunities and that's why they do the crime. And that's why we have to deal with ransomware and stuff is because there are people who are somewhat technically competent, but they don't have the opportunities, you know, to turn that into a meaningful career. But you do. You live in, uh, you know, most of you are living in San Francisco. You know, you'll have connections. You can get into places like Facebook. You can get into places like Google's. You can get into startups, you know, and make a legitimate career. So I, I recommend you do that and not just, you know, commit crimes. Um, that's bad. Well, you started learning about this. How long it took for you? Uh, so it took this. I was I started in kindergarten, and I'm still not done yet. Mm. <laughs> and and that's sort of the the attitude you need, you need to have. So when I was when I was in kindergarten, uh, my parents used to have to call the 
uh, plumbers constantly. They, we were their number one customers because I had this fascination with the toilet. I don't know why, but everything had to get flushed because I wanted to see what would happen. What would happen if you flushed, you know, <laughs> the you know the Barbie doll? What would happen if you flushed her brush? What would happen if you flushed her, you know, this and that? Um, and that's the sort of attitude you need to have as a hacker. Is you have to you have this item, you have this piece of technology. It's used for one thing. What happens when you use it for something else? <laughs> you know, when a website asks for your name, what happens when you give it? um 64 kilobytes of data you know it, it's those types of thinkings is is how you find these vulnerabilities and exploit these vulnerabilities um and you never stop learning and that's one of the things about this field uh one of the traps i see people get into is they think i'm going to learn security and i'm going to make so much money i'm going to become a millionaire because i'm going to know security um, and they think it's sort of like being a Windows domain manager, where you take a class, you learn about Windows domain management, and then you're good for like five or 10 years. And then maybe, you know, a few versions down the line, you might have to refresh, you know, take another class or course, and then you're good. Uh, with cybersecurity, you always have to be learning. Um, imposter syndrome is a huge thing because none of us are experts on everything. Uh, one of the things you just sort of have to learn, like, like, like I said, after after I got done with Sam's cl Sam's classes, I went off to to work with NASA, and they're like, hey, we have like power equipment here that needs to be secured, and by power equipment, I mean full on ICS uh, from the you know government sending down ten thousand volts uh, of you know ten kilovolts of of power to these like industrial machines. And we need to make sure like everything's, you know, hunky dory and all this stuff. And or you know, there might be some like aeronautical stuff that needs, um, you know, fixing and, and securing. And so, I mean, I don't know any of that. I never touched a, you know, million dollar drone before. I never touched a, you know, the the electrical power grid or anything like that before. Um, but I was said, I'm just going to learn. I picked up a book. I picked up two books. I picked up three books. I just started playing. I learned everything I could, um, and eventually I, uh, you know, was found I was able to do it. Um, and you just have to learn that confidence that, no, I don't know how to do it Maybe. yet, yet. Uh, and then when you have the confidence that you can learn, um, that's that's when you sort of are, I guess, like an expert in your field. Not when you know everything, but when you know that you can learn, you know, to do the thing. Um, when did you start taking uh, like uh, academic courses and classes for that moment service related things? Like so yeah, when when did I start taking classes and stuff? So um, it's it's really funny. Um, I was actually at City College working on child development stuff. So I was very much wanting to work with children who are, are like kind of special needs. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to get too, too into it, but I like technology. And so I, I took a, some electronics classes to make things more diverse and, and missed all my uh, child development classes. One day, I could not take uh, the electronics class I wanted, and I saw this thing called Exploit Development by Sam Bown, and I'm like, oh, this sounds interesting. I don't know if I'll like it. Um, and uh, that was it. And so I ended up uh, taking Sam's classes for about a year and a half, maybe two years, um, sort of slowly at first, and then it sort of became my thing. Um, but but most of the learning you'll do is outside of classes. Um, and so like when I first took Sam's classes, I actually started at the top, uh, like it's sort of end class, because I, I've already, you know, sort of done a lot of the stuff before because it's so fun. Um, uh, and, and to this day, like even outside of Sam's classes, I do a lot of stuff that just required me to learn, you know, by myself. So I do a lot of aerospace technology stuff. Uh, and there's very few schools and none that I know of where you can get a degree or learn about how to do cybersecurity in outer space. And so, you know, I had to learn 
uh, oh gosh, so much about uh, space technology. I had to learn about you know radio waves, radio transmissions, um, microwave transmissions, the different bands, uh, how to do digital signal processing. Um, let's see, and then of course there's spacecraft design, rocket design. Well, basically become like a rocket scientist. Um, and I, I couldn't rely, I couldn't, you, you, you can't learn that at City College. You, you might be able to learn some of that at, you know, like st at a few select colleges. Um, but at the end of the day, you just have to be willing to just do your own research and, and real research too, and do your own projects because that's how you really learn. It's one thing to read in a book, like, hey, let's, I want to learn about how how Nmap works, and you can read that in the book, but you're not going to really learn Nmap unless you, you know, hmm. use it, you know, daily, and you absolutely should be using Nmap daily. I just wanted to make a point. We've had a little talk, uh, chat going on in the Zoom um, chat, so especially for folks that are watching on Twitch, um, you know, what Caitlin said is absolutely correct. You want to keep your Keep your nose clean if you can. Keep your record clean so that you can pass a uh, uh, security clearance uh, vetting process, which is, it can be pretty thorough. But, um, you know, one caveat to that is that if you have um, had some incidents in the past, maybe, you, maybe you've got a record, maybe you're a formerly incarcerated individual, that doesn't necessarily preclude you from getting a job in IT or security. Um, you'll have fewer options, but there are a lot of companies uh, now that are um, are uh, starting what they call second chance or fair chance programs that will um, hire uh, formerly incarcerated individuals. So um, if, if your life has been um, impacted by the justice system don't don't lose hope there there are some resources available and uh, a student just shared a uh, a resource um honestjobs.com for uh folks that may be in that uh maybe in that uh category and looking for work so um i just went ahead and posted that in the twitch chat too so that uh you can access that as well Yeah, I just want to put out there. I've been trying to. I've been listening to all this. I've been trying to run that um, ethical hacking uh, DVD on both my PC and my laptop, and I'm not getting any action on it. I'm wondering if you've known about that or any advice because uh, going through the book by itself, that that's uh, that's kind of like a kick in the junk. You know what I mean? Like the DVD. It doesn't say it's not compatible with Windows 6.2 and ask a vendor for something. And I'm like, I bought this a year ago at Amazon. I don't think I'm going to get much help from them. Oh, that's a good question. I've actually oh. never, I've had the uh, textbook, but I've actually never even seen the no. DVD. I, uh, I would just ignore that DVD. It never worked. What it is is some really old version of Backtrack or Kali or something. It doesn't matter. Just use the project so you can download a modern machine. Yeah, do Sam's projects and do hack the, uh, not, uh, do try hack me. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm definitely, definitely going to do all that. Definitely, definitely. All right, cool. All right. Thank yeah. you for uh, cutting up because I'm not going to put any, any effort into the disc. I'm just going to let my dog chew on it or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Make it into a sun catcher. <laughs> and uh, healing could come uh, like often, you know, have some kind of like with this kind of project or something fun sometimes with Liz or Sam. I wish he could come often and do this thing. Sorry? Yeah, I didn't get that yeah. either. Oh, I said I, I wish Kaylin can come often, like, you know, with Lisa and uh, with you or uh, Sam and have